Welcome into Birds Huddle, powered by Points Bet, along with the one, the only, the very excited Barrett Brooks. I am Taryn Hatcher, and it is game week, Barrett. Whoa. It's hard to believe, but it's finally here. The question is, are you, are you ready for Sunday? I, do I look ready for Do I look ready for Sunday? Hell yeah, let's go, baby. All game right. time. <laughs> well, now the question is. Is Jonathan Gannon ready for Sunday? Because it is a new look defense for Gannon in year two. He's got a whole bunch of new weapons in his arsenal earlier today. He spoke about how he plans to deploy his unit a little differently this season. I think letting them play a little bit more, you know, and not to say that we didn't let them play last year, but, you know, I, I told those guys, you know, they're, we got to problem solve and you guys got to think on your feet and, and get me out of trouble when a call is not ideal. You know, and that's what I think that our defense, the guys that we have right now, have shown that through camp. And um, I just honestly just trust the whole room a little bit better. And part of that, you guys, is being second year in the system. You know, they've seen a lot of the things that we talked about last year not seeing. You know, and now they've seen some of that, and they can function on the move um, in between the whistles, which I'm really excited about. All right, a lot to dissect there, and that brings us to our three-point stance presented by your Mercedes. It's Barrett's stance on the three items of the day. His first stance, there is more pressure on Jonathan Gannon than Jalen Hurts coming into this season. It's interesting, and I think I agree with you 100% here, actually. Well, you know, you look at it, two-thirds – of the salary cap probably goes to the defense. They brought everybody on defense. If you look at it, there was really only really one, one and a half big pieces that they brought in the offensive side of the ball. You know, AJ and Pascal. Both of those guys on the guys. But if you look at everybody else on the defensive side of the ball, look, Jordan Davis, Hassan Redder, Kazir White, Kobe Dean, James Bradbury, Chauncey Garler, uh, Johnson. All that's, that's a lot of money right there. That's a whole lot of money just sitting right there on the defensive side of the ball. So, yes, he has to be an expert chef and make sure that he get these guys going in the right direction. When you have allocated that much money to one side of the ball, that one side of the ball better carry its load. Better go out there and ball. And I see that, you know, right now that they're going to do that. And the biggest thing I heard him say was that, hey, if he calls the wrong call, he now has the personnel to make him look good even though he called the wrong call. Because I think these guys are going to ball. They're going to come together and say, hey, look, it doesn't matter what coach calls. We are a good enough defense to go out there and make it happen. And that's where you turn around and become a great defense. It doesn't matter what you call. If you take on the identity of your coach, and I think Gannon is ready to go in and turn into that aggressive-minded coach, that's when you start getting the production out of guys you wouldn't necessarily see. You got to go above beyond. You got to play, you know, not necessarily beyond what they're supposed to be, like beyond their means. The, you got to stay within the framework of the defense. But sometimes you got to go out there and just make a special play because you're a special player. And they have players like that. Hassan Reddick. I mean, he may not be called. All right, I, I know I'm not going to be able to get there because I got a back sitting there and, and, and a tackle sitting there. But you play a beyond what you, you know, what you think you can, and you all of a sudden get there when you're not supposed to get there. That's when you start becoming a better player, a better defense, a better co uh, coach, and you start calling stuff, knowing your defense can handle whatever you put out there. I think that's the transition he was waiting for that he couldn't do last year, but he can do this year because guys are ready to take it to that next level, to take that next step into being a quality defense. And that all comes when they turn around and say, look, recall is what the coach says. We're all regardless of what the call is. I don't care if we got nickel out there and they got two tight ends. They're running 12 formation, one running back, two uh, tight ends. They got 12 personnel. They're coming to run the ball. You can see they're better to run the ball. But then you see those guys on the defensive line bow up a little bit. All right. I don't care what you got there. We still going to go out there and stop the play. That's when you become a special defense. So, yes, he does have a lot on his shoulders to be the play, uh, to be the defensive coordinator that they see he needs to be with all the resources they've given him the salary cap value that he has on that side of the ball, but he has guys ready really to take to that next step to become the defense I think they should be with the amount of player and talents that they have over there. Well, and it's not even just talent. It's versatile talent at that. No question. All right, yep. let's get to that second stance. The Lions, you say, will be a much tougher matchup than they were last year. The Eagles won in Detroit last year, 44-6. to Lions head coach Dan Campbell, he called it, quote, an embarrassing loss. And yesterday he acknowledged that the Eagles, quote, came in, did everything they wanted to do, and they did it to us times 10. So you'd imagine, Barrett, that this time around, he's going to do, he's going to try to do anything he can to avoid it happening to them the first time, nonetheless, 
times 10. No question. You know, he, he, he's going to get them guys. He's going to rally his troops. He's one of those guys going to get, you know, a fire and brimstone guy. He's going to have them going out there ready to play. But they just don't have enough to play against this Eagles team. Yes, you see Hard Knocks, and everybody saw what they did on Hard Knocks. They, you know, they're a great team. You hear the speeches they've given. You know how the coaches are, 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 are former NFL players. It still doesn't change the fact they are still the Lions. And that the Eagles go and approach it like, all right, we're just playing business as usual. I don't care what they have there. Bunch of name, nameless and faceless jerseys out there. It doesn't matter. We're going to go out there and whoop them because we're supposed to whoop them. We're the better team. And I think that's the attitude they're going to go with. They'll beat the Detroit Lions team because they don't believe in what all that stuff they saw at Hard Knocks. They believe that they are the Hard Knocks of, this t- of the uh, NFL, that they belong to be up in the upper echelon of players and, and the teams. So, yeah, they'll go out there and, and, and make mismatch. Even though they will be better, they're just not good enough to beat the so Eagles. We'll see if they break into double-digit scoring this year. Oh, <laughs> there we go. There we all go. right, your final stance. Say it ain't so. Jason Peters. Oh, man. Yeah, he did, not fi- in fact, sign a deal with the Cowboys to join their practice squad. Here is the tweet that the team sent out yesterday, and Peters spoke about joining the boys. Take a listen. I was just weighing my options, and then when this came up, my home state, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't pass it up to, to play for the Cowboys, you know, two hours from my hometown. It's weird to be putting the, these colors on after playing against them so uh, Yeah, a little bit, you know. Like I said, that was our rivalry, you know, you know the Dallas and uh, Eagle rivalry go deep, so it's kind of weird, but I'm, I'm here you know, in, my, in my home state and ready to roll. That D. I, I, looks, I, looks dirty today. Uh, Eleven years, 148 games with the business of football. Bear, it's a I, I, business. I, I took a hundred thousand dollar less to go to Detroit rather than go to to to, to the Dallas Cowboys. Well, I probably should have went. I missed that hundred thousand. But look, I'm just saying this. He's not gonna look good in there. But that's like you know, he's got to go. He went home from Queen, Queen City, um, uh, Texas. He's going home. I understand that. I'll give him that. He's 40 years old at the end of his career. We won't even know about that. He'll still be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Jason Peters, I wish you all well, except when you play the Eagles. In fact, I know my guys. Reddick will have like two sacks on him. (laughs) BG will have a sack on him. He's kind of old now. I think they put it on him. Yeah, that's our secret weapon now. Well, if you we, see we how, planted him there. If you see how BG signing helmets these days, then you know he's going to definitely try to get a sack hey, on him. Hey, I and saw if you that. don't know what I'm talking about, you're going to have to look it up on Twitter because it's not appropriate for television. I think as, as a leader, you have to be able to um, kind of assess the team, assess your group, um, and then you have to be open to um, – trying new things for different individuals because ultimately we all have the same goal. So, um, yeah, I think I think that's what makes makes it unique. There you have it. Jalen Hurts describing his views on leadership. And that brings us to the bird's eye view brought to you, brought to you by Ocean Casino Resort in Atlantic City. Joining us to discuss Jalen Hurts and much more, our Eagles beat writer Dave Zingaro, a leader himself, I would say, among us. Uh, Dave, you wrote about Hurts. You wrote about his leadership style today after he was named team captain once again. Uh, has he carried himself maybe a little bit differently this year as compared to last season? Yeah, no, probably not, honestly. (laughs) But he's such a a natural leader that, to be fair, he hasn't carried himself differently since he's been here going back to his rookie season in 2020. Honestly, it probably caused some waves when he was a rookie because the guys kind of gravitated toward him. Uh, The the leadership characteristics he had, they are special. And I I know that every talk we go through about Jalen Hurts is going to be about, you know, he has to improve as a passer and this and that. What's the ceiling? But... The intangibles matter too. They do. And and they don't get you over the hump. They're not going to make up for any on-field deficiencies, but they matter. And the guys care about playing hard for him. And those leadership intangibles are kind of what separates him in a lot of ways. Well, and it's interesting because even now we have certain conversations about Carson Wentz and yesteryear. Half, at least half the chatter is about. I was the trying to do this without going there, Terry. <laughs> I was I trying not to take mention it. it there. Okay, Barrett. Speaking of, how important is it for a young quarterback, regardless of his leadership style, to ascend to a certain level of leadership to be viewed that way by his teammates in that locker room? Well, because it's the most important position on, on the field. The quarterback position is probably the number one. No, not probably. Is the number one position 
on the 53 man roster where this guy goes the rest of the team goes so as a young quarterback you kind of differentiate yourself from from you know the guy that you just replaced number one but number two you got to show everybody in the locker room that you're a leader of men you can lead these guys you can take them somewhere you know I mean they have to have the supreme confidence that you are the guy to lead this team and that's exactly what Jalen Hurts does you know he in fact that's where it kind of got kind of rocky here with Carson Wentz it got rocky because he came in an instant leader people gravitated towards him but they were moving away from Carson and you could see that weird dynamic start to take over the team up until he left so yes you have to go in and search yourself it's almost like a dominance thing and being an alpha male you got to search yourself as the leader of the team because you're at the number one position number one number two you got to make sure these guys can follow you and 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 what you're doing is, is accurate as far as you know being the leader of the team. So yes, he has to done and he has done it for the past two years. Dave, I got to ask, we were on a one shot of Barrett, so I know the viewers at home couldn't see it, but when he talked about that gravitational pull towards Jalen away from Carson, that look exactly came over your face. What was that about? Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> it, it happened. Yeah, you know, it happened. And I, I, it's not like overly dramatic, but he has those kind of abilities and I think he has a kind of an elevated understanding of what it means to be a leader especially he's still a pretty young kid yes. in a locker room of players who are mostly older than him but he has the understanding of how to go about it he said something really interesting last week talking about it basically like every player on this team is different I have to treat them differently you have to know people out of the way he does and he's a young guy and that understanding for being as young as he is is impressive to me our first audit of the yeah, segment. Yeah. Now our second. That's all right, let's go as far away from the Carson Hurts of it all. Let's talk about a newly acquired safety, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. He was picked up last week. So needless to say, it's been a bit of a crash course for him to get ready for the week. Do you expect, Dave, that he will be the starter, have everything ready to go on his plate in the opener, able to deal with it all? Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot to learn in 11 days. He's basically playing a new position. There's some crossover, but a new position, new verbiage. That said, I think he's going to be out there and he's going to have to play because, to be frank, the options outside of him aren't great. And you're going to have to toss him into the fire. And, and that's not to say that there won't be some growing pains along the ways there might be. But I'm confident that he's at least a playmaker. And he's the kind of playmaker they haven't had. You know, you went from Anthony Harris, who's steady, knows the defense, probably won't mess up, but isn't going to make a play. And that's not a shot at Anthony Harris. It's just looking at Garner Johnson and what he can be. He's a playmaker. And, and even if he doesn't know all the defense quite yet, he can still make plays. Oh, my goodness. Gosh. It's, it's, we're talking about a guy that's going to come in and play nickel corner. He's not going to play safety first. You move Avante Maddox to safety, it'll be a smoother transition for right now. Eventually, he will make it to being, CJ will eventually make it back to being a safety. But right now, if you give him a, a position that he's already played, he's already played that nickel corner position. Allow him to go out there and be more aggressive. That's what he is. He's more physical and aggressive than Avante Maddox. He's played the position. He understands that Avante has played both. And Avante knows the defense a little better because Avante's thinking this, all right, I know where my help is. I'm at the corner, I'm at uh, nickel corner. I, I, I know who my help is. My help is right here. When he has transferred from his help to being the help. Now, so I said, all right, I knew when I was playing nickel corner that I had help over here. Well, let me go over here because that's where I need to be because now he can use that ability. So I just think he's going to play nickel. That's just me. Well, you have to remember, there's, there will be crossover. Even in this game, like TJ Hawkinson is a big tight end. Yes. If he's lining up inside, yeah, Gardner Johnson kind of makes more sense to cover him. Absolutely. Yep. In a way, he'll be the nickel, but he's really going to be more of a strong safety. And he'll still have to carry his coverage. I, I, I think some of it gets lost in semantics. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Apples, well, oranges, all fruit. That's what yeah. you say. Yeah. I was going to say, do you agree with Barrett has put on his defensive coordinator hat. He is our resident Jonathan Gannon today. <laughs> Would you agree with that plan of attack at least to get him assimilated into this defense, but also ready for week one at the same time? No, no, I, I would play him at safety and I, I get your, your thought process there, but then you might be weakening two spots uh, if you're throwing him in there. And I, I think it makes more sense to say, all right, here you are at safety and we have Marcus Epps. We know every other position is the same. And they can worry about one guy being out of position or learning that position as opposed to moving multiple pieces around. So I think it probably makes more sense to just say, all right, Gardner Johnson, you're a safety. we got to kind of figure this out on the fly. And, and like I said, there might be growing pains, but I'm just saying this. When you're the slot corner, 
wherever the slot is, where's the slot corner going to be? Oh, 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 right there, <laughs> right on the slot. So that's why I say it's not hard. It's not hard. If you see the, you see the second receiver coming out there and line up in the slot, you're going to be the slot corner. Yeah. It's, it'll, be, it'll be an easier transition. And I, I get what you're saying, because there's some, there's, but there is some crossover. I think the toughest part for Gardner Johnson is going to be rotating coverage. You know, and I'll, I'll give you that. Yes, that that's going to come with time, but it's OK. Like they're, and they're run fit also. And, run and fits. I'm not too worried about that because he is a physical player. Uh, I think the run fits will be OK. I think rotating coverage is going to be a little tougher, but I have faith that he'll figure it out. Yeah. And, and it, it might get better as the season goes on. Right. I like to say birds huddle where the feathers come to together. But I think today we might have ruffled a few between these no, two. No, no, he's so. a smart guy. I mean, a smart guy. You know, we smart guy we're just hashing just it out. Maybe this, disagrees with a little bit here. You know, you know That's what, fine. You know, smart guys are just wrong sometimes. But I'm just saying, <laughs> no, 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 seriously. I mean, this is a conversation that, you know, that goes on upstairs at our desk. You know, we just yeah. go back and forth with these kind of conversations all the time. You know, so it's, I pick his brain, he picks my brain. I don't know what he gets out of my brain, though, but he, <laughs> I pick his all the time.